Hello, and welcome to Fight for Your Marriage with Anita. Do you know someone in the midst of a separation or divorce? Since statistics tell us half of all American marriages end in divorce, you more than likely do. So please be sure to share this video with others who might need or appreciate the encouragement. When you're facing separation or divorce, it can feel like you're all alone in a world that's falling apart. But there's hope with Jesus. Today, I'd like to share how I survived separation and divorce. As many of you know, after less than one year of marriage, my husband Brent moved out and moved to another state. We were separated for about a year before I received divorce papers in the mail September 11, 2001. There were times I thought I was going to lose my mind, but God is good and I'm still here, clothed in my right mind and sitting at the feet of Jesus. How did I survive? My heavenly father stood by my side, comforted me, healed my broken heart, sent the Holy Spirit to spark a revival in my walk with Christ and placed a group of godly women in my life who encouraged me to pray for my husband and marriage. God used these experiences and women to help me gird my armor on and engage in spiritual warfare for my life, my mental health, my husband, and my marriage. During this difficult time of my life, I cried out to God for help, and he heard me. He gave me indispensable weapons of faith and taught me how to fight. Fervently pray, identify Bible promises, give thanks, have patience, take time for testimonies. God has a thousand ways to provide for the needs of his children. And today I would like to share six ways he provided for me and helped me to survive separation and later divorce. Number one, seek the Lord. Number two, search the scriptures. Number three, sing songs of praise. Number four, strive for self-development. Number five, serve others. Number six, seek support. Now let's take a closer look at each of these six tips. Tip number one, seek the Lord. Isaiah 55 verses six and seven tells us, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. During my first year of marriage, I was so excited about being married to Brent, I failed to set aside significant time for my savior. Once Brent was gone, I had plenty of time to reflect upon the past and seek the Lord with my whole heart for guidance for the future. Despite my unfaithfulness, God was faithful. In Jeremiah 29, 13, we read, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. As I sought God with all my heart, he fulfilled his promise and I found him. Once I found the Lord, I held tight and refused to let him go. I love him because he first loved me. He loved me when others thought I was unlovable and unworthy of their time, love, and attention. And I am eternally grateful for his everlasting love. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, we find an exciting story about Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. When the enemy came against Jehoshaphat, what did he do? We'll find the answer in verses 3 and 4 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Jehoshaphat sought the Lord and he helped him. As the enemy comes in like a flood, I encourage you to seek the Lord. He loves you with an everlasting love and he will help you. Tip number two for surviving separation and divorce is search the scriptures. Search the Bible to learn more about Jesus, to discover God's will for your life, and to discover his precious promises. Promises that can encourage you and inspire you with hope as you go forward and cast down negative, discouraging thoughts. 
promises that can encourage you and inspire you with hope as you go forward and cast down negative, discouraging thoughts. It is Satan's work to discourage the soul. It is Christ's work to inspire with faith and hope. Desire of Ages, page 249. As you search the scriptures, you will discover precious promises that can inspire your heart with faith and hope in the darkest storms of life. Page 114 of Christ's Object Lesson states, No one can search the scriptures in the Spirit of Christ without being rewarded. When man is willing to be instructed as a little child, when he submits wholly to God, he will find the truth in his word. God promises us that those who seek will find. So search the scriptures for truth that can guide you, encourage you, and inspire you with hope for the future. My third tip for surviving separation and divorce is sing songs of praise. Ephesians 5.19 tells us to speak to ourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and to sing and make melody in our hearts to the Lord. Psalms 149 verse 1 tells us to praise the Lord and sing unto him a new song. When Brent and I were separated, music became a great source of encouragement for me. My tears of sadness often turned to tears of joy as I listened to the uplifting words of hymns like Day by Day and more upbeat music like Fred Hammond's No Weapon Formed Against Me and Mary Mary's I Just Can't Give Up Now. Later in life, I became acquainted with and began enjoying simple scripture songs. In addition to encouraging me, these songs enable me to effortlessly memorize God's word. Sabrina Hugh has over 50 such songs on Spotify and YouTube. I also enjoy listening to scripture songs created by my family members. My husband Brent has been writing thought-provoking scripture songs for many years, and our children have followed his lead. Now our two oldest children, Madison and Samuel, write scripture songs, sing the songs, and play musical instruments to go along with the songs they've written. Here's a quote about the power of song from page 174 of the devotional, My Life Today. Let praise and thanksgiving be expressed in song. When tempted, instead of giving utterance to our feelings, let us by faith lift up a song of thanksgiving to God. Song is a weapon that we can always use against discouragement. As we thus open the heart to the sunlight of the Savior's presence, we shall have his blessing. It's time to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Praise God in advance for victories like King Jehoshaphat, who sent singers ahead of the army to praise the Lord. How did God respond to the songs of praise? He defeated their enemies. Sing songs of praise, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Tip number four for surviving separation and divorce is strive for self-development. Our first duty to God and our fellow beings is in self-development. Every faculty with which the Creator has endowed us should be cultivated to the highest degree of perfection, that we may be able to do the greatest amount of good of which we are capable. In order to purify and refine our characters, we need the grace given us of Christ that will enable us to see and correct our deficiencies and improve that which is excellent in our characters. Child Guidance, page 164. When I think of a sister striving for self-development, the Proverbs 31 woman comes to mind. As I read about her, I've come to the conclusion that she carries a spirit of excellence with her in every area of her well-balanced life. But her greatness did not come by chance. I believe this woman grew in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by striving for self-development. She obtained knowledge by the faithful use of her powers, and God increased her understanding, her skills, and her strength. She worked, and God worked. If you'd like to learn more about this amazing woman, I encourage you 
Check out Renee's Proverbs 31 study. Your education should continue during your lifetime. Every day, you should be learning and putting to practical use the knowledge gained. Mind, Character, and Personality, page 689. I encourage you to set aside 15 minutes a day to learn something. Study a particular topic in the Bible. Read a book. Read an article. Attend a class or workshop. Listen to a podcast. Watch a video. Talk to others with more experience. I think you'll be surprised at how much you can learn and get done when you set aside at least 15 minutes a day to learn something new. With God's help, follow the example of the Proverbs 31 woman and make the most of your opportunities for self-development. Tip number five for surviving separation and divorce is serve others. When I think of the importance of serving others as a way to survive separation and divorce, someone very close to my heart comes to mind. I'll call this dear woman Anna. When Anna found herself a divorced mother of three, she was faced with several choices. Discouragement or encouragement, hopelessness or hope, selfishness or service. With God's help, Anna chose to count her blessings and serve others. She chose to use her blessings to bless others. Anna began welcoming guests to her home to enjoy home-cooked meals and fellowship with others who may have returned home after Sabbath worship to a quiet, lonely home. In addition, Anna began an aggressive campaign to uplift, care for, and encourage senior citizens. She started with phone calls, visits, and groceries and she eventually expanded to hosting programs and events where the senior citizens were showered with lots of love by her and other members of the community. With God's help, follow the example of Anna and take advantage of opportunities to serve others. The sixth and final tip I'd like to share for surviving separation and divorce is seek support. Around the same time Brent left, I was invited to Sheila's home for an always faithful meeting. Married, separated, and divorced women from all walks of life gathered in Sheila's living room to comfort and be comforted. We sang praises to God, prayed, cried, testified, and studied the Bible together. Meetings at Sheila's were like a drink of water to my thirsty soul. Are you interested in being a part of a group of godly women dedicated to gaining victories in spiritual warfare, marriage, and mental health? If so, I encourage you to register for the Brave Wife Support Group. With God's help, I started this support group back in 2019, and we've been going strong since then. We meet for an online Bible study, testimonies, and intercessory prayer the second Sunday of each month. Then we come together the third Thursday of each month for a day of united fasting and prayer for families. The icing on the cake comes at least once a year when we meet together at my home for informative, inspirational messages, good food, and sweet fellowship. In addition to group support, I also offer private support. If you feel like this is something you'd be interested in, I invite you to visit our website and book your free 20-minute fight call. www.fightforyourmarriagetoday.com is the website. I've shared six actions that help me survive separation and divorce. Which of these six actions is God leading you to incorporate in your life today? What are some other things that have helped you cope during separation, divorce, or other difficult times? I'd like to hear from you, so please leave a comment and let me know. Thank you for watching. May God continue to bless you as you fight for your marriage.